Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Good to see. Uh, I just see all names today. Don't nobody want to show their face. It's all right, but glad to see those that are um, the names and um, that are coming up. Welcome again to um, our St. Peter uh, Wednesday night Bible study. Um, grateful to be here on this evening. I hope everybody's been having a great week so far. Um, rain, sun, sun and rain. Um, and hope you're staying hydrated, uh, drinking plenty of of fluids of uh, mainly water. Is that uh, Robin? Is that you? You on? Uh, yes, I am. Oh, great. What uh, What do you have for us tonight? What kind of song God placed um, on you? Um, I just uh, okay. I'm ready. <laughs> Guide me along the way, Lord, Lord, if you lead me, I, I cannot stray, so I'm asking you, Lord, Walk. Each day, each day, each day with thee, Lord, lead me, oh, Lord, lead me. I'm going to say it one more time, because I need the Lord to lead me. I need him to guide me along, along life's way. Lord, Lord, if you lead me, Lord, I cannot stray. Lord, Please let me walk each day, each day, each day with thee, Lord, lead me, oh, Lord, lead me. Amen. Hey, man, thank you, sister. Um, uh, beautiful. You still have that beautiful voice. Thank you for that song um, reminding us um, that God should lead us and that he should guide us. Anytime he lead us, um, we don't go astray. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Sister Robin. Uh, Sister Taylor, how are you? And she go she she go missing on us. Um Good sister, evening, everyone. Good evening, Sister Bishop. Good evening, Pastor. <laughs> Hi, Sister Taylor. Can you can you open us up with prayer? Sure. The Lord is the light of my salvation. Mm. Whom should I fear? Mm. The Lord is the strength of my life. Mm. Of whom shall I be afraid? Mm. Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for bringing us this far in this day. We thank you for our health and our strength. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for being in our right mind. We thank you, O Heavenly Father, for your love and your kindness that have showered us, O God, with your blessings. We just truly thank you, O Heavenly Father, for just being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you, O God, for meeting us at our needs, O Heavenly Father. We thank you, O Heavenly Father, for the food that you supplied for us today, Lord, for yes. our homes, O Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for our jobs, and we thank you, thank you, O Heavenly Father, for going to hospitals and 
taking care of those that are sick and those that need healing, oh God. And thank we thank you, Lord, for those that need comforting right now, Lord. We thank you for being a comforter for them, oh God. We yeah. thank you, oh Heavenly Father, for even going to the jailhouse, oh God, and and working on the hearts of those that are there, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we just thank you, oh Heavenly Father, for our pastor and his wife. We thank you, Lord, for our St. Peter family, Heavenly thank Father. You, we thank you, Lord, for our elder and his wife and our, our bishop and his wife, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you, oh Heavenly Father, for all the clergymen, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we pray if there is any sick among us, oh Heavenly Father, that you would just touch their bodies right now, Lord. Jesus, Lord. Touch them and make them whole again, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, for tonight's um, study, Lord, we just ask that you just show yourself strong, Lord. I pray, oh God, that if there's um, whatever we're studying tonight, Lord, that you will reveal yourself in that study, oh God. If there's anyone on here, oh God, that needs healing, that needs um, to be uh, made whole again, Lord, I ask that you touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Sister Taylor. You know, Sister Taylor don't talk much, but you definitely give a beautiful prayer. We're uh, grateful um, for that prayer uh, covering all of us, not only uh, within the church, but those outside the church and our extended families. Um, we have our children on. Um, we're thankful for the parents and the teachers um, that will teach our children and they can move on over to the room um, and then we'll get started. Mr. Bishop, how's the traveling coming? Okay. Oh, it's it's going. Yeah. Okay. We're back. You're back. Okay. We're back. So we'll see you guys Sunday. <laughs> All right. Well, that's great. Good. God has brought you back over. Tonight we're in um Hosea chapter five. Um Thank you to Brother Smith, which he may or may not be on this evening. He did text me. Um, he's helping his daughter. So um, it'll be me tonight. On next week, I'm going to try and teach uh, again, if the Lord say the same. Uh, I'll be in Georgia all week um, for work. Sometimes the, the hotel internet is stable and sometimes it's not. But we're going to do the best we can. Um, we're in Hosea 5, uh, thanks to Sister Moffitt, who had directed us to the minor prophet. We're able to see what's going on um, in Hosea, how's God dealing with Israel and how he's dealing with his people and how his people turn his back, his children will turn their back on him, um, such as today, how some are turning their back on, on him. But God has a way of drawing us back to him. Um, he has a way of bringing us back, even when we think we have gotten far away. Sister Bishop, Sister Robin, he he know how to get us back. Um, so when we look at any questions from uh, chapter four, before we move into five. None? Well, everybody speak at once now. Okay. Are we there? Can I get a, a mic check just to make sure you hear me? I'm here. Okay. So there's some, some people here. Thank you. So when we look at, if we have no questions about um, chapter four, we go into five. Um, in chapter five, <clears throat> um, Hosea, uh, the prophet God, still dealing with him. And when we look at... Um, the entire chapter five, God, um, it's about God's judgment. You know, God has a judgment against the priests. We saw that in, in four. He's going to have judgment against the people. He got her judgment against um, the princes of Israel. And he has a judgment for um, all the multiple sins, the things that were going on. God has this judgment, uh, church, until they repent. Um, in uh, the New Testament as well as the Old, um, you know, the Bible tell us that, um, you know, God wished that no one um, would perish, but would all likewise 
come to repentance. So until they repent, um, down around verse 15 in this chapter, <clears throat> we will see how God deals with them. And by dealing with this treacherous, uh, you know, with the Lord, the men only deceive themselves. The women only deceive themselves. I meant when we go against him, Rosemary, I'm just into the introduction. When we go against him, Robin, um, we deceive ourselves. When we don't do what God um, tell us to do, we just deceive ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. But then when we look into this chapter, you know, those that go to seek God, those that those that's going to to seek the Lord um, with their flocks um, and their herd, um, they're going with that. They're not going with their hearts and their souls. And when you don't go to God wholeheartedly with your heart and with your soul, um, Sister uh, Taylor, you know, there's going to be some problems. We can't expect to find him. You know, in the Old Testament and in the New, in, in Peter, where it says, seek the Lord while he may be found, call on him while he's near. Um, there are going to be some time where um, you're going to seek him. Um, but they will, if when we seek God, if we don't seek him with our hearts, we don't seek him with our souls, then we can't really um, expect to find him. So we seek him while he may, uh, may be found. So also, um, this chapter <clears throat> is going to serve, it's going to remind us um, of some consequences from turning away from God. When we turn away from his commands and we turn away from our uh, spiritual responsibilities, our responsibilities that we're supposed to have, um, Hosea remind us even today, even though it was... Um, they, they, those things were going on many, many years ago, thousands of years ago. Um, they had dire consequences then. We have dire consequences now. Uh, yes, people say, you know, one save, always save, not true. Yes, they say God is a loving God, a faithful God. He's going to look past it. He's going to look past it when you come to yourself and uh, repent. Just like... Um, you know, the the uh, prodigal son, you know, who left. I mean, the Bible said when he came to himself. I mean, we have to come to ourselves, um, Sister Moffitt, and others um, and realize that we have responsibilities, that we have um, things that we're supposed to take care of. But this uh, chapter five also going to inspire us because we can reflect, you know, it, it, it allow us to reflect back on our own actions. When we look through, when we get into it, um, it will uh, remind us, it, it can encourage us to seek God um, wholeheartedly and, and to correct our ways, you know, um, we can reflect back and see some of the things that we may be dealing with, some of the things that we're struggling with, um, that we need God's help. This chapter will encourage us, you know, okay, without God, um, we're nothing. So it opened up with God through Hosea. He's calling upon the priests in Israel. He's calling upon the royal house to his judgment. Um, they are accused of setting this trap, you know, um, and uh, they, they, they setting this trap for them from the wicked deeds that, that that's going to go on in this chapter. But God's going to, um, you know, he's going to give them some knowledge. So we're going to get into chapter one. Any questions or um, we're going to get into uh, verse one. Any questions or comments from the introduction there? Trying to give you a little bit. No. Okay. Am I making it clear? Is it, is it, am I confusing anybody? I'm making it clear, sir. Okay. I want to make sure um, we're not confused. So, uh the seven five number and the seven five two number. I'm not sure who that is. Two zero five seven five nine forty one forty. Mm 
Okay, they're not sure either. Two oh five. That's Miss Hill. Okay. I think so. And then seven five two eight six two nine. I don't know. It might be Miss Jackie. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. That's Miss Jackie Sanders. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Good to hear your voice, Sister Sanders. Good uh, to hear you all. Miss Hill. So when we look at um, anyone want to get verse one for it? I'll read it. Okay. Sister okay. Hear this, you priests. Hear this, you priests. Pay attention, you Israelites. Listen, O royal house. This judgment is against you. You have been a snare at Nizpah and uh, Nizpah. A mm -hmm. mess went out on table. Okay, thank you, uh, Sister Moffitt. So uh, there's an indictment here mm -hmm. uh, of the leaders um, in Hosea. There's an indictment. He he got, hear this, you priests. He ain't afraid. You know, you know how some of us pastors and and leaders and elders. You know, you got somebody. It's this is a prophet that's coming to him, a, a mouthpiece for God. But you know, anytime there's some correction, we you know we got a problem with it. Now, I like how our elder uh, Cameron does uh, when he anytime he deal with his you know the preachers that's under his leadership, he he does it so professionally and so you know in love. You know, especially if it's something out of the discipline that we might be a little confused with or not following. He knows how to come and correct it. But here's the thing. He get their attention in this verse where he said, hear this, you priests. Mm -hmm. Then he said, pay attention, mm -hmm. house of Israel. Then he still used that stern. He said, listen, do you think that gets somebody attention? Yes. That's right. You house of the king. He said, this judgment apply to you. I ain't scared of you. You have been a trap at Melzpa and are net spread out at Tabar. And when you look at um uh if if you don't know um about Mezpa, Mezpa um it, it's important. It was a uh, uh it was situated uh in Central Ridge. It was the spine, it was between the cities of Hebron and Jerusalem. And they called it Lookout. And it was called that because of the location that the people would travel in that area. Um, from the north, they would see Jerusalem. So they called it the Lookout. Anybody ever been to Lookout Mountain in Chattanooga? Where you, when you go up there, you know, you can see all across. And if you go up to Rock City, you can see across seven states, they say. Right. But Mezpah, it was um it was a place where they traveled. They were um uh, would travel um between Hebrew and Jerusalem and they would um they would be able to see um uh, Jerusalem first. They call it the watchtower. Um God kept watch between you and me. You ever hear that? Um they called it the watchtower. Uh Laban said, God keep watch between you and me. And when we were out of each other's sight, you know, that was, um, uh, we had members, I know it, and when I was at Spring Hill, would always say that to their, you know, when they're going to be away from their parents and be away from their family, you know, God keep watch between you and me. When we're out of each other's sight, that was a little prayer. But that's what we're saying, you know, and when we, and, and Tabor, it steams from uh, Mount Tabor in Israel. And uh, when you study that, it talks about how beautiful um, the mountains were in uh, Tabar. But they was both symbolic. Tabar and uh, Mezpah, they were symbolic. They were wicked they, of their wicked deeds. <laughs> it was symbolic of the wicked deeds. And uh, God it deals with that. So uh, Hosea, hear this, you priests. Pay attention. Boy, I wish we paid attention on, on Sunday mornings all the time when we go and worship. 
Pay attention to God. Listen, you of the house of the king. I ain't scared of you. I'm, I'm letting you know. God, you know, God has my back. And see, when God has your back, you can speak with authority. You can go right to him and do that. He said, here it is, O priest. That's a process. He's he's instituting against the priest, the Israelites, and, and the house of the king. And they called on him to, uh, you know, appear and defend themselves. You know, that was an accusation that was going on that ensnared the people. It caused them to practice idolatry. He was trying to get their attention. He go, he starts with the priests. In those days, the priests, they were leaders. You know, they was to keep, you know, the body uh, together, the people together, but the priests were involved in allowing this practice to go on. Both at Melzbar and Tabar. So uh, he didn't mind any, any courses in, in verse one. He called them out. He got their attention. You know, he's talking to the house. He's talking to the king. He's talking to all of them that are going against God, where everybody he needed to talk to that was in his presence at the time. He called. Let's look at verse two. I'm sorry. I had walked away from my phone, but I had it on speaker. Oh, it's okay, Sister uh, Hill. Mm -hmm. you, you with us in Hosea 5? Can you get verse two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the revoking are profound to make slaughter, though I have been a rebuke of them all. Okay. So um, he wanted to make slaughter. Thank you, Sister Hill and mm -hmm. Sister Martha. Mm -hmm. And my version said, and the rebels mm -hmm. have gone deep in depravity. But I discipline them all. Mm -hmm. God is using Hosea. He's speaking through him. He's saying, you know, the, uh, they're, they're profound to make slaughter. Here, he, he's giving reference. He's talking about the practice of, of, of those hunters make deep pits in the ground. Back then, they would um, dig these uh, deep holes in the ground. Um, and they were slightly covered, uh, Sister Martha, Sister Hill. Um, that mm -hmm. way, when the bees come across, they don't discover them that they might fall in and become some prey. But he was saying, these are how the people are. That's how they act. But if they continue to act out and they continue to go against God and practice these things, they're going to fall in the pit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, even symbolically, even with us, um, within the church, you know, the devil set up traps yep. that we may fall into the pit. <laughs> and we, if we ain't careful and not paying attention to it, that's exactly what yeah. happened. He's saying that I will discipline them. He said, I will bring chastisement on them because they have been victims of their adultery. I, he said, I will make victims of them to my justice. He's saying some thought that as many as they wish to depart from this idolatry worship set up by Jeroboam, he said they were slaughtered. So, and Israel's made the sin. So he he he's um he's dead on them. He's trying to get them to turn away from these practices of uh, idolatry, something that God is not pleased with worshiping other gods and come back to me. All right. So Shauna, can you get verse three? I know Ephraim and Israel is not hid from me. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom and Israel is defiled. Okay. Thank you. I know Ephraim and Israel. It's not hidden from me, even if they think they are hid. They're not hidden from me. He, he said, you've been unfaithful. Israel, you have defied itself. I know the whole, he said, all of you are idol worshipers. Here's the thing, nothing can be hid from God. That's right. Right? Right. You can try and hide 
wherever you can. You can go in your closet. You can go in your basement. You can get up under your car. God still know and see where you are. <laughs> you can go to Texas and 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 still can't hide from God. You can get on a plane. You're not hiding from God. Nothing can be hidden from him. Everything is plain in his sight. And see, it's, it, it's not Hosea who, who's speaking, but it's God. God is speaking through him. He's using him. Hosea is a prophet, a mouthpiece for God. When nothing can be hidden from him, you know, everything is exposed and laid open before the eternal God. You know, when we look at that and we, we talk about, I know Ephraim is what he said. I know him. And when you know somebody, you know him, right? If you, How do you know somebody? And I'm just opening it up right now. How do you know somebody? By talking to him, listening to him. Talking to him, listening to him. You, you get to know him that way, right? Mm -hmm. In a relationship, I mean, you got to know Mr. Hill. Right. By checking him out, right? Right. <laughs> you didn't just talk to him. You checked out his walk, then you sister Hill. <laughs> checked out his talk. Yep. How he would mm. treat you. Yep. The things he would say. Yep. You get to know people by spending some time and understanding. Mm. And then some people still don't know. Yeah, after they've been with him 15, 20 years, they still mm. had, don't know everything about the person that they think they know. Mm -hmm. That's true. But God revealed, he's telling um, through Hosea that I know Ephraim and Israel. I know what you're doing, but you ain't had, you, you can't hide from me. I know you've been unfaithful. I see it. Israel, you, you've defiled yourself. I see it. I know the whole to be idolaters. You know, back then they they had the um, the pagan priest. You know, they had, you know, godliness. You know, they they had different forms of of of, of worship that wasn't uh, connected with God. They didn't have the true religion that they should have had. You know. Um, and, and, and God sent Hosea to deal with her. In Hosea, the word Ephraim, um, is named over 30 times. It's used for Israel. Ephraim was almost as large as Judah, Sister Hill. And, um, you know, it had the largest of the 12 tribes. But the problem is it was always jealous of and envious of, of Judah. This tribe, Ephraim, it led the deflection of the 10 tribes to form the northern kingdom. We talked about the northern and, and the southern kingdom. Although the children of Israel eventually corrupted through Ephraim's leadership, they was corrupted. So Hosea got a lot. He he started this chapter off um, being stern. He started out being, um, you know, do, doing what God told him to do. He started out with no fear. Um. And he started out getting their attention, saying, look, all these things that you're doing incorrectly, all these things that you're doing wrong, all these things that um, are not pleasing to God, uh, you don't have true religion, you, you're you not worshiping like he said, you, you're following after false doctrine, you're following after these false people, um, we need you to stop this. Any questions? 
I'm going to tell Benny y'all quiet tonight. Uh, let's look at verse 4. Sister Bishop, you have verse 4? Yes. I'm okay. sorry. I, I have it muted and it's hard for me to get it unmuted. It's okay. Yeah. Verse four says, "There these, there these do not permit them to return to their God. A spirit of prostitution is in their heart. They, hmm. do, they do." Not acknowledge the Lord. Okay. Thank you, Sister Bishop. So he goes on. Jose, he goes on. He get their attention. He tell them what they're doing. Then in verse 4, their deeds don't allow them to return to their God. Their deeds are going off. They're doing so many things that are causing them not to focus on God. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, um. And, and the King James said they were not framed from their doing to turn unto their God. They won't stop doing what they need to do. I mean, sometimes we can get so caught up and some people into deep, so deep into that sin where they won't, they don't just don't turn back to God. And see, people don't understand, you know, uh, and some Christians don't understand when people are dealing with flesh I mean, with the spirit and not flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. They're dealing with the spirit, uh, Robin, um, the spiritual wickedness that goes behind it. You know, it said we not we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, right? But against um, powers, yes. those powers of spiritual oh, wickedness, those things that um, that the devil try and throw out away. Their deeds didn't allow them to return to God. They were so far out. <laughs> You know, Zell trying to get them back. You know, there's we have people even walking around today that's so far away from God. They're so far, they they so caught up in the worldly things that it don't allow them to turn back to God. I had friends I grew up with that was so caught up in to making that fast money. To where they it wouldn't allow them to turn back to God. They were so caught up into robbing people that they couldn't turn back to God. And we can get caught up into relationships that don't allow us to return back to God. It said, for a spirit of infidelity, I think you said, uh, your Bible said something else, didn't it? Um, Sister, uh, my King James is spirit of whoredoms. I think yours is spirit of prostitution. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yes. It's uh, it. mm -hmm. It's within them. Mm -hmm. And they don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. So they was having some trouble. They was having some problems. He was dealing with some people that, you know, it's hard to get folks that don't know the Lord <laughs> to try and know the Lord. <laughs> mm -hmm. They knew the Lord. God had been there. God has kept them. God, they turned away. And see, God never moves. It's we who move away from him. Hey. Their deeds wouldn't allow them to go back. They wouldn't frame from their doing. They didn't want to stop. Everything was pleasing and, and pleasurable to them. You know how you know the the the, the pleasure of the eye, the, the uh, things were good for. Them. They were they you know that the partying and all that was just great. You know I know some of us have been to college and and have have stayed on campus and you know that was a, you know I talked to some people they say that's a party every night on campus, and when some people get caught up into that they. The, uh, the grades that they made, the A's that they were making turned into D's or F's. 
The classes they supposed to have been going to, they wasn't showing up for. The work they supposed to have been doing and turning in, the partying was so good. You know, I was talking to 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 some to some some of my friends and and some church members. You know, on the reason why I don't drink. One reason I don't is because I want to be one in control of myself. Mm -hmm. But the second reason I don't want to wake up in strange places. <laughs> because, you know, they ain't called spirits just for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> These things could happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. If they turn and they were saying that they would drink um, and they wouldn't, you know, they find themselves waking up here, find themselves waking over there. Some people find themselves waking up and being taken advantage of or being raped or, mm -hmm. you know, these people would not refrain from what they were doing. They never um, had their purpose to turn to God. They had fully engaged in the spirit of adultery. They was fully there. They were possessed by evil spirit. And it was driving them not to just sin, but to sin over and over and over and over. And that's why I say they have the spirit of whoredoms is in their midst. And the devil knows how to do and what to do and what people like and how to get them off course if they uh, allow him to get in there. So it was in the midst of them. It was in their in their inner self. It was in their center. It was in their speech. It was in their souls. It was in their um their will. It resided. It was in their reason. It was in their judgment. As long as they didn't, uh, they did not have the strength of God. As long as they stayed stuck in that sin, that God was saying, "You have turned into a whore. You have turned into a prostitute." As long as they were stuck there, they didn't have the strength of God. And folks, we can find, I mean, it's real. You get caught up in in, 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 in that life of sin and can't turn away um, the strength that we need from God. It won't be there until we repent. So you have to repent and turn away from God. They needed to repent and turn away from it. <laughs> Am I making any sense, Sister Mom? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want you to go tell on me. <laughs> but yet, God, you know, their evil doings, um, they, uh, you know, it took away their whole heart for God. Um, but they need to turn to God with, with this solid conversion. They need to turn to God with repentance, turn to God and give up all these things of being a prostitute or being an autumn or being whatever they cut that was causing them not to be with them. But God, he made their sins more grievous. Mm -hmm. You know, he who they would not turn to, God that they would not turn to, um, he still own them. Even when we don't give ourselves up to God wholeheartedly, God still own us. We don't own ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mothers give birth to children, but you don't own the child. <laughs> right? They, they they still God's child. Right. God owns them, but you're a overseer or care. Mm -hmm. You you're the mother for a time. But that's going to be a time when they get grown, they're going to move on, they're going to talk back, they're going to roll their eyes, they're going to stomp their feet if they don't find themselves getting up off the ground, Sister Hill, afterwards. <laughs> but God still own them. Right. You know, we, we, you know, you, God makes the mother uh, an overseer, right. a God and a God. But at, when this life is over, it's no mother, father, no sister, bro. It's no mother, father, daddy, son. We we'll all will be brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. We know that because when the uh, lady died in the Bible, you know, the question came up, well, who's going to be a husband in heaven? 
up on him? Nobody. <laughs> we're going to be brothers and sisters. We turn from being husband and wife on earth to being so heavenly spirits, sisters and brothers in heaven. But God still owned them. And we're still ready to receive them, even though they didn't want to turn away, turn back to it. And see, God is ready to receive anybody. That's how come we can't give up on nobody. Right. Whether whether they was a, a drug addiction, whether they had a bad alcohol addiction, whether they had sex um, addiction, whether they had rock, whatever the condition was. God mm -hmm. is still ready to receive them if they turn back with a repentant heart. Mm -hmm. And God still loves us all. God loves every one of them. Mm -hmm. Now here's the problem. We have a problem. And we have a problem, Sister Moffat, is because, you know, when we begin not to dislike some people <laughs> or dislike our brothers and sisters, you know, we're supposed to hate a sin but still love them. Right. But sometimes we have it backwards. You know, we hate the sin and hate them too. But God still love them. God said everything he created was good. Even when we say there ain't going to be no good. Or, you know, we're not, you know, but God still have a plan. Right. And we don't know what his plan is. That's true. So still God is ready to receive them. We see that in this verse. You know, they, they will not refrain from what they're doing. They won't give up their purpose and turn back to God. They are fully mobile to this spirit. This spirit has taken over. But God said, when you snap out of it, I still take you back. Right. All, right. All right. But they got to repent. Um. The evil doings uh, were bad. You know, it took away their heart to turn to God with a solid conversion. Mm -hmm. But yet, he was their God, and he made their sins a, a little more harder. <laughs> but that was to get them to come back so he can receive them. He's still ready to receive them. Because the prophet continued, you know, Hosea, he began, he continued. They have not known the Lord, is what he said, their God. They knew him not. For that spirit that was within them, that had possessed them, that hindered them from their thoughts and from their memory, from their conception of, of spiritual things, you know, they wouldn't turn back to God. I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, was concentrating on this verse because. You know, it, it's it's serious how an evil spirit can overtake. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if those not are strong enough, even, you know, the Bible tell us, you know, if someone is overtaken by fault, meaning that they can't control themselves, they can't get themselves together. They're struggling with us with this particular sin. The Bible said he who are spiritual. Restore such a one. That means you have to be able to go a strong spirit and lean on God. You got to go with the spirit uh, um, that God has given you, the spirit of of um, of knowing that God is able to turn things around. Mm -hmm. That spirit had possessed them. It got in their thought. It was in their memory. You know, it was in um, even in, in in spiritual things that they would not turn to God. Right. Right. Because the evil spirit held them, and as long as they allowed this hole to be there, they were filled with those corner thoughts. They was filled with um, those things. And that's why, you know, we meet some people, you know, if they hadn't met God and had, you know, the Holy Spirit to 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 get down in them or, or haven't been saved, a lot of times when you're talking to them, they still have that corner mind. Mm -hmm. They still have that young mind. They still have that mind of, doing everything against God's will and think it's okay. But until somebody teach them and tell them and show them and let them know that, you know, those things are not okay. Then they didn't know God. 
So not knowing how good and how great God is, how good he is to us, you know, how good he had been to them. They ain't even have a desire to turn to him. Right. But God still loved them. Amen. But they loved themselves. <laughs> you know, and, you know, they saw not, they didn't see it, that they were lost and that they was losing mm -hmm. a loving God. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful, I'm going to stop at verse four. Mm -hmm. If we're not careful, we're going to miss a loving God. If we're not mm -hmm. careful, um, we're going to forget about a loving God, one that has done so much for us, that has always been, that has always watched out, want the best for us. But we, you know, the thing is, they turned away on them on, on their own. Mm -hmm. And see, the scripture tell us that we're drawn away by our own lust mm -hmm. and entice. But that's how come we always have to um, stay rooted and grounded in the Bible, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was younger, my grandfather used to always tell me, either the Bible keep you from sin or <laughs> sin will keep you from the Bible. Mm -hmm. If I'm caught up in sin and caught up in it and that's my thing and my mind is corner about it, then um, I'm not going to pick up that Bible. Mm -hmm. I may pick up and turn a few pages, but I'm not going to be into it. Mm -hmm. Most of the time you caught up in it, you're not thinking about God's word. You think about oh, what can what what what's pleasing to my spirit? What can quench what I like? You know what can I do in those things? So any questions or any comments? So do we understand uh, what God is trying to do through Hosea in in the first four verses? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's getting on them. Mm -hmm. He's basically telling them, yeah, you need to yeah, hey, straighten up. Mm -hmm. Before it's too late. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop at verse four unless uh, Sister Martha wants me to go on over one more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's storming here. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, it's it's uh it's six forty eight, so I want to um give give way if uh um, see kids doing that. Thank you for those who've read, those who've commented, those who um, uh, shared in tonight's Bible study. You make it um, that much greater when, when we hear. I try not to make it uh, boring and make it fit into um, in today, where it can help us on today. Good job, Pastor. Well, thank you, Sister Rose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to wait on the kids, and then we'll have announcements and prayer. We do know... Um, that the district conference is on Friday, um, starting at nine, I believe, at Tabernacle A. Zion. Thank you for those um, who volunteered to go over and help um, serve. They called on St. Peter um, for that, so we're we're grateful. Um, um, you know that we've been thought about. <laughs> you know to help us out, help them out as well. Any other announcements you might be missing? Hey, Pastor, I, I don't have no announcement, but um, I had wanted to comment on what you had said about the um about um staying grounded in the word. Um, for me, um, I think that for me, it's like I try to do my reading and everything in the morning before my day even gets started. And that way, um, I'm like, I feel like I'm I can handle what's going to be coming. You know, it's like and like you see it once you once your day starts and you're going on about your day, a lot of times it's hard to get in, to get, go to work and be like, okay, let me go read. You know, it's I think it's good to start off the day with it. Yeah, and you're right, sister, um, Bishop. You know, the thing is, anytime you start your day off with the Lord, it's that much moving. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we get caught up, we get up, uh, you, if you're running late, 
you ain't thinking about God, you're thinking about getting to work. If you, <laughs> if you, um, you know, if you're rushing, you know, a lot of times, but you know, um, if we set goals and we set times of getting up in the morning early enough to meditate and pray and get into his word, um, then if you don't make it back into his word throughout the day, you've already been in it that morning. You set the day um, for, you know, you and God in that morning, and then you let God do the rest um, um, throughout the day. Now, there's others that may work at night. Right. Mm -hmm. So they work at night, you know, during the morning, you know, they get in um, from that point or whenever they get up, you know, and they, you know, thank God and they meditate. But there's, we have to spend some time with him. Other than Sundays and Wednesday nights, um, daily, I try and read the scriptures. Even I have the Bible app, you know, that every morning that scripture come in, whether I want it or not. Mm-hmm. And then it, it you know, it give me the motivation to read a scripture daily and expound on it and meditate on it. So I think all of us, um, when we get, we can get to that point to where we spending some time with him, whether it's in prayer, whether it's in uh, meditation, um, whether it's a quiet moment of thinking about um, his goodness, whether it's a quiet moment of thinking about, um, I heard a preacher today on, um, I may have been on a radio station where he said, you know, thank God for things that didn't happen. Like, Mm -hmm a train that didn't hit you or that I wasn't in an accident today or, Mm -hmm. you know, what, you know, those are some of the things we don't think about. Mm -hmm. That's the things that didn't happen. That could have happened. And um, we should thank God for that too. Mm -hmm. So um, God is a jealous God and God just want us um, to worship him, not only on Sundays and, and even on Wednesdays, but every day, give him some worship, give him some praise, because the things he do, he don't have to do. Amen. 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 Is that brought my brother Jax? Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, I see the they're back. Um, did uh, the teacher of any of the students want to share um, what they learned on tonight? Or what they taught? No. Okay. <laughs> did you say something to Taylor? Or did you want to say something? I'm sorry. Uh, we had a good night tonight, uh, Pastor. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Yes, it was a good lesson. Miss Taylor probably wanted to talk about it, but I enjoyed the lesson. It was encouraging uh, to know that we pray to God, not, and He hears us, and He will answer our prayers. Uh, and we also have have Braxton on the line tonight. He wanted right. to uh, get in, so yes. All right, thank you all, teachers, for um, continuing to. Uh, bring that on. I was talking to one of our uh, pastors from Birmingham this, this earlier this morning, and he said, "How are you all doing Bible study?" Uh, and I told him via Zoom. He said, "Well, how the kids or how they getting involved?" I said, "Well, they go to a breakout room now." And he's like, "Well, we wow, we need to do that, you know, for for hours, you know, that's encouraging." So um, I was encouraged and excited that you know others see that you know the effort even though we don't have a whole lot to get on we do have some mm-hmm. and you know you know the, if we just reach one we get one coming we we've done um what god has asked us to do mm-hmm. bishop family you have something oh no i'll just say amen amen <laughs> all right um do we have any prayer requests or robin do you all have any announcements um before we take prayer requests it's Robin, um, Sister Taylor. I know. Um, I, just, okay. Um, I just want to say that I remind everybody that the Quality Conference is um, June the eighteenth, mm-hmm. and um, I'm asking everyone if they can to have their reports sent to me by 
Friday. Tomorrow. Yeah. Friday. Yes. Friday. Is that Friday. tomorrow? No, that's no, Thursday. Thursday. Friday, the seventh. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, any prayer requests? Oh. Um, oh, go ahead. I would um I'm asking prayers for my brother Tony Brown. He's at DCH um, uh, Hospital. So I'm asking prayers for him. Okay. And now uh, I'm asking prayers for our, our uncle. Um, he's at DCH also. And he had uh, open heart surgery yesterday. Okay. And they said that he's doing well today. Uh, but if you all could just pray. Um, What's his name? Um. <laughs> Well, uh, I think well, we just call Uncle Chicken. Uncle Chicken. <laughs> Uncle Chicken. <laughs> Uncle Chicken. Yep. All right now. Okay, I, 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 that's a that's a new one on me right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, we we'll we'll definitely lift it up in prayer. Um, okay. Anybody? Mm -hmm. else? I would just like to ask that you keep the Taylor family and our church family in prayer, please. Right. And I want to give you an update on um, Brother Larry Bostic. Keep him in your prayers. Um, he is um, he is he's struggling with um, with a medical condition. Let me say that. Um, and I know most of the members probably already know um, his his situation. Um, but he's he he's lost a lot of weight. He's um, mm -hmm. but we uh, definitely I, I saw him saw him yesterday. Spent a good hour with him and definitely prayed for him. And and um, Sister Boston yeah. Smith, we um, we were we had good conversation. But he is uh he's struggling with a sickness um and um he he needs he needs all our prayer um, as well as the others uh, we did see uh, him we saw um sister uh, uh, Young's niece that live right there by the um. Funeral by the uh, Rollins, and we saw uh, Sister Orly on uh, keep her lifted up, uh, and um, we saw so many. I can't even think of their names. I see their faces right now. Sister Todd. Sister Todd. Yeah. We was able to get by and see her over at um, the nursing home there. But, you know, when you go in and you see, uh, you don't know until you visit and see how they're going. You know, our, our grandparents used to tell us, you know, to go and look for yourself. You know, to see um, the condition, because they'll tell you over the phone, I'm feeling fine. But when you see them, you know, um, they're not all the way there. So. Any other prayer requests? And if not, we'll go to God in prayer. Uh, Pastor Freeman, will you please mm -hmm. uh, put Don Woods uh, on the prayer list? He's in ICU at DCH. Okay. Don Woods? Don Woods. Don Woods. Donald. D-O-N-A-L-D. Woods. Okay. Got it. And uh, Pastor, my uncle Chicken, their last name is Carpenter. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> I'd rather say Carpenter family. Okay. <laughs> Uncle Carpenter. Yes. Uncle Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Let us pray. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus, uh, thanking you for being a mighty, awesome, amazing, mighty God. Father, you've been so good to us, uh, better than we have been to ourselves. Father, we thank you for being with us this week. Um, Lord, being with us in worship service, being with us uh, from Sunday to Wednesday. We're grateful, Father, for the things that you do and have done for us. 
And Father, we don't take it lightly. Thank you for loving us, Lord, uh, beyond how we can even love ourselves. Thank you for forgiving us, Father, for the things that we were even didn't want to forgive ourselves for, but you forgave us, Father. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, for you said um, that we should always pray and that we should pray for one another, Father. So we're coming, Lord, laying um, our members and our friends and extended family at your feet on this evening, Father, asking that you will hear and answer our prayers in Jesus' name. You said what well, two or more gathered in the midst, in, in, in your name, you would be in the midst. Thank you, Father, for being in the midst of our Bible study. Thank you for the teachers, Father, who have taught on this evening, the children who have uh, was able, Lord, to listen and learn, uh, the adults, Father, who shared um, in Bible study their um, knowledge and their wisdom, their understanding. Father, we thank you for all the things that you do for us. Father, we ask that you would bless every ministry um, at St. Peter Amy Zion Church, Father. Bless every leader of those ministries, Father, and even any leader, Father, that is growing weary. Father, give them the strength. Renew their strength day by day, Father. Lord, encourage them, Father, to keep on moving on, Lord, for your kingdom. Father, you said we will be rewarded, Father, if we continue, if we just stay until the end, Father. You tell us the race is not given to the swift, but those who endure. Help us to endure until the end. Father, we come in Jesus' name, Lord, lifting up Tony, uh, to you on this evening, Father, and DCH, Father, we pray right now um, for healing in Jesus' name. We pray um, whatever Tony Brown, uh, Robin's brother, Father, we pray, Lord, that you would send your Holy Spirit, your miraculous power and healing power over in that hospital, Father. We've heard um, there were others there, Father, that was uh, Uncle Carpenter, uh, Father, that had surgery, Father, we pray that you would help them to have a speedy recovery in the name of Jesus. Father, you are made the heart, Father. So we pray that you would heal that heart that has been worked on. Father, we know that you perform the best operation out there, Father. And we pray, Father, for healing in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up the Taylor family to you. Father, we ask, Lord, whatever they need, Lord, you will provide. We ask, Lord, um, that you will stop by there. Uh, their homes and extended homes, Father. Uh, let your spirit saturate in that place and into the hearts. And yeah. Father, uh, whatever they ask you for, because you said if we ask anything in your name, you will give it. Give it to them in Jesus' name. Lord, fix anything that's out of place. Father, heal anything that need to be healed. Lord, God, every heart, every mind, break any chain that need to be broken, Father. Lord, where well, they can be one with you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up Brother Bostic to you um, and Donald uh, and unto you right now, Father. We pray that's in DCH. We pray, Lord, for uh, healing in, in their bodies, Lord. We pray for speedy recoveries for those operations, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would do what no man can do, Father. Uh, show us, Lord, that you're God, Father. You sit high, you look low. Nothing oh, yes. too hard for you. Lord, you said if we ask, Lord, you will do it. We ask, and Lord, you said if we knock, um, you will answer. If we seek you, we'll find you. We're looking for you, Father, Lord, to do great and wonderful things. And, Father, we claim victory in the name of Jesus. And then, Father, we pray, Lord, that you would get us back um, to our place of worship, Father. Um yes, as, as soon, Lord, as uh, you allow the opportunity, Father. Lord, help us to keep our minds stayed on you. Watch over us the rest of the week. Protect us, Lord, from the things that the devil tried to do. Lord, keep us in perfect peace and our minds stayed on you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And then, Father, we pray for a successful district conference. We pray for our elder in the name of Jesus. You will continue, Lord, to lead and guide him. Give him strength and his family, his wife, his children, his grandchildren. Continue to touch the bishop, Father, yeah. in his family. Continue to watch over them, bless them what they need. And Father, every pastor, Father, among our district and all over the U.S., Father, that are doing wonderful things in your name, continue to bless their hands and bless their feet. Bless their minds and their spirits. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 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 Well, have a great Amen. night. Good night. Good night.